I am thrilled to see that you are here to see how we are going to paint and break down this flower. This video is going to give you real-time progress of how I break down the different steps to painting this. Specifically, we are going to be using the mark making technique. So let's dive in. Hello and hi. Today we are going to be painting another flower and these flowers are all adapted from this very book here called the flower color guide and it features many different flowers of different species and colors and I really like this reference book because it gives me the opportunity to find floral shapes as well as identify how different flowers are formed and grow. So today I'm going to be painting this one here and it's called an ester flower which is usually grown during the summertime and I believe that these purple blooms are going to be a really nice treat to try out water colouring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will be starting with mixing my colours and we're going to get a really nice light blue-ish purple and for us to do that I'm going to use my mixing plate I am using my flat brush which is in a size half inch by silver black velvet to mix my paints. My paints are mostly from Snyler and a few from Holbein. I'm putting down a mix of Holbein lavender as well as Sennelier red and cerulean blue. These colors in combination will give me this lavender purple color. If you mix and match the consistencies of paint, meaning to adjust the amount of water you have in your brush and your palette, you will be able to get darker and lighter values. On the other hand, if you were to add more red tones, you will get a warmer version of this purple, while if you add more cerulean blue, you're going to get a cooler version. Starting with the outside shape of the flower, I start dabbing with my flat brush. So I see that the petals are kind of moving around and I'm also moving around with my brush, dabbing and basically trying to get some movement. I do see that where the middle is, it feels like the colour is darker and more intense. So I'm going to drop in a slightly darker colour. And it's kind of nice to add this reddish hue because you get a bit of variation in your painting. Every time I want to get a light value, I would wash off my paint to get a lighter value or colour. When you create these flowers, you are really just making marks with the brush that you have. And I'm using the side of my brush to create these petal shapes. I am mixing my Holbein Lavender with some Snyler Red. So I get this very nice um, plum shape.
after I've painted the outside shape of the flower, I start to move inwards and this is where I'm starting to add shadow in the middle of the flower. This is a common theme across all flowers where we feel like the middle of the flower is typically where most of the shadows fall. So you want to add a darker hue or darker values in the middle to indicate that there's no light shining in. After we're done with the flower, we're going to start moving towards the stem. I'm getting some chrome oxide green from Snyla. And I really like this green because it's already a very earthy kind of green. And I'm just going to add a tinge of purple in there just to create harmony. Then I'm going to try and paint the stalk. So you notice that my table has changed because I didn't finish this painting in one sitting. I, being a mom means that you know I get to paint while they are napping but it also means that um, for me it's also quite hard for me to find the time to complete a painting and I think that's fine, that's okay. And I'm also giving myself, you know, that allowance to just paint as and when. So I want to capture a couple of esters in the distance. And what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a wet wash. And this is just clean water. And the clean water is going to give me some really nice soft edges, you know. And I'm just going to add everywhere because you know I, I never know where I want to have them and I really like to capture some really soft colors I'm gonna get my lavender again and you know this time because they are further in the distance I want to get them in a nice kind of blue and as you can see because it's wet it kind of feathers the colors wet on wet is really one of the favorites in terms of um, techniques that I use you know you can do so much with wet on wet work so I've got one in the distance there and then maybe I might create one in the distance here you know just facing in this direction maybe so you know kind of figure out the direction you want your flower to face so that you can capture it and don't be too worried about the details because you can always go back in, add layers later on. I just darken the center so that um, when I go back into it, it's just not all fuzzy. Then, so these are a little bit more blue, but for it to be a bit more cohesive, I'm going to add a bit of purple to it. So I recently cleaned up my palette and that feels pretty good because, you know, um, while it's very nice to see different colors that your paints can make, sometimes you get stuck on the same colors. So it's also good to kind of refresh your palette a little, give it new life, and then maybe you'll discover new colors and combinations that you enjoy painting and working with. One of the greens that I really like, that I would highly recommend you try out, is this one um, called Oxide Chrome, Oxide, Chrome Oxide Green by Snyler. It's got this really beautiful smoky kind of feel to it and I really like that it's um, 
you, you don't you don't it's already such a natural looking color you don't have to mix much reds or blues into it to give it a, a certain look so keeping in mind that I want to keep my painting really loose I am just really using my brush to just go around and down so you can see the difference between these ones here have very hard edges while here have very soft edges and that's because I have chosen to use wet on wet technique to capture these guys and my paper is actually starting to dry so this means that um, I'm definitely going to have to paint faster if I want to continue to use it while it's wet um, otherwise you know you can slowly paint and maybe I want to add these colors with a lighter kind of value so when I change the color value I'm basically going to um, add more water to my paint or my brush so that it gives me lighter values. So now I've captured these very blurry and in terms of composition it feels like it's leaning towards this side so I'm going to try and add some flowers around other parts of the paper and I'm also going to do it wet on wet so that it balances it out doesn't look um, too strange so maybe I'm gonna add one here in the corner here a small one and another just we'll just start with that one so yeah so that's how painting is you kind of figure out things on the go and then you decide how it feels like and looks like for you so a lot of the flowers have been facing in different directions I'm just gonna make this small one here kind of face me so we don't really have one that faces outwards and me exactly so it's going to be a mix of blues and purples and I really like this Esther flower because it's got such nice flower shape you know the petals and everything if you watch the way I manipulate the brush, you would see that I've not turned the paper and if anything, I'm really turning my wrist around, I'm moving my brush in different directions and coming in, whether it's towards myself, pulling towards me or away from me, so this allows me to create a variation in strokes. When I need to go into details, I would typically hold my brush much closer to the bristles so that this gives me better control. Next. I am adding in the shadows and when I add the shadows, I'm literally just going back in the same areas where I have popped in my stem before and I'm just adding in a darker value. So this gives some contrast to your painting and it also gives the viewer a chance to see that there are some leaves that are in front while there are others in the background. I really like layering I just feel like you don't have to commit to that one layer and you get the opportunity to kind of go back and you know put in the shapes that you missed out before basically following the flower direction roughly so those soft layers of flowers have dried and I'm going back in to add similar brush strokes as I did with the first two flowers. This is going to give the flower some definition as well as depth. I love to add in these layers because it gives a contrast between soft edges as well as hard edges when you are doing your watercolor painting. 
Again, use the brush in various angles, rotate it around for you to get different brush strokes. You're also able to vary the amount of water to your brush to create different color values. And this I have repeated quite many times, but what I mean is that you get lighter colors versus darker colors depending on which part of the flower you're going through. Remember that as you're painting, you don't have to paint every single detail. It's nice to allow the viewer to fill in the gaps and it also gives a sense of interest to your flower when you've got those white spots. It allows curiosity to happen and at the same time, you can always go back and add in details as and when. I'm again going in, adding in the shadows. Painting the shadows is an essential part of watercolor painting because this is going to allow your painting to get depth. As I'm going through the finer details, I've also switched my brush to a smaller round brush. This gives me the opportunity to go in and really add very fine details or fine lines that I wasn't able to achieve with my square brush. This brush I'm using is a silver black velvet brush size 6. I love that it gives me a very very fine point. It is a synthetic mixed with natural hair brush which means that it holds a lot of water. Now my brush show you the piece of painting that I did so basically you can see that these have very soft edges as compared to these that I started out they're a lot harder edged I wanted it to have a very soft look so compared to the reference photo you can see that this is how the flowers are shaped but I have created my own rendition of it to create these as the flowers. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching me paint, allowing me to sit down with you and go through my process from start to finish, looking at how I break down the reference photo and put down the strokes. I'm grateful for the time that we spent together. Remember to use this video as a guideline and not as a place to compare. Everyone is at a different part of their journey and one of the most important things is for you to enjoy your own. Music